So AI is changing the world at a weirdly rapid pace as we know it. And you and I both have seen what has happened to ChatGPT in the past couple of months and also obviously the rest of the other competitors that obviously kind of like, you know, came to life throughout this whole process. So this video is basically on actual physical implementations thereof, how you as the business owner can go into uh, this new kind of like world, kind of new technology aspect of things and actually have physical implementation thereof to have an action plan or a roadmap, whatever you want to call it, to implement this new technology that has been obviously new to the market. It's, it's something that not a lot of people are actually utilizing right. So this is not a video on ChatGPT. This is an actual physical implementation thereof. So whether you are the best pizza maker, whether you are the top dog lawyer, or whether you are a top farmer, or like a marketer or a business person, it really does not matter. At the end of the day, you and your team, you are going to be able to use this and implement this directly into your business after this video. There's also a little bonus at the end of this video. So if you sit with me, um, it's going to be worth every single second. And me and my team, we've sat down uh, the past two weeks putting this together for you. So I really do hope that you guys enjoy this video. And um, yeah, as always, take this and go and implement this uh, into your business, into your processes. And do let me know if it helps. If it doesn't help, leave a like on this video. If it does, if you find value on this video, and also drop me a comment on what you think or dislike the video um, if you did not like it at all. So it helps me to craft better content for you guys. And I will keep putting out these videos for you guys. You're the reason why I keep putting out these videos. All right, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at AI and chill with self-built systems. So this is a new uh, series that I have, you know, came to about. And because I thought, hey, most people like to Netflix and chill with their girl on the weekend, but now it's the time to strap in an AI and chill with your buddies or with your business partners or with whoever. This is really the time. There's never been a better time to be alive and a better time for you as the business owner to find optimization with inside of your business. So what are we doing always, you know, as business owners? We're always trying to find some sort of an edge. We're trying to optimize this thing. We are trying to go out and, you know, build this new future set or we're trying to go out and use this new technology in our business processes. And we're trying to hire this new person to, to help us with this process or we're trying to upgrade our marketing with this or do that or do this, have this meeting to improve this. At the end of the day, it's our decision making and the processes that we take in order to really, you know, tune the machine to if, like an optimal point of efficiency where all of the inputs produce fantastic and amazing outputs, right? And obviously there are different problems that come up there of, but AI is that incremental lever that if you do not pull this leverage lever, okay? In this age of like super intelligence, which we are moving towards this information age where we are right now, there will be a competitor that will. And that competitor is going to be the competitor that gained the edge above you as the business owner. And that's just a reality. And that's why I'm so damn passionate about this and so driven to share this with you guys because there's never been a better time to be alive. And I've said this before, it's like the it's like the gold rush 2.0 if you understand actually how to take this and implement this into your own processes. And that's why I put out this video for free. So if you guys want this document, also do let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, either me or one of my team members will shoot it straight over to you. Um, so without further ado, let's get right to this video. So guys, what are we looking at? We're looking at the AI and chill with self-built systems. We're looking at the market framing firstly, okay? So if I zoom in here, uh, just give me one second. Let me zoom here. Why is it not zooming? Let's zoom, zoom, zoom. Okay, let's zoom. All right, so we're looking at the market framing here, okay? So Mosaic ML's core market has been specifically training generative AI models that are so large that they require multiple nodes of GPUs. So they are expanding left and right in the training process into interfencing and actually providing these pre-built models themselves. So they aim to offer an end-to-end -end solution to the interface available via an API. Okay, so I put choo-choo there because if you understand what I just unpacked there, it will, you know, you'll kind of get excited because, you know, if you can just go and, and 
get your own kind of like, you know, customized kind of model, you kind of understand where this leads to, right? But if you don't, then sit with me and you'll have a better overview of this whole process. It's literally a roadmap. You can see it as a roadmap, as an action plan for you as the business owner to, to actually get this AI running in your business and um, to drive efficiency, right? So let's quickly look at the roadmap that we have here. We have nine points that we're going to cover here, okay? And I put visuals here for the visual learners because me, myself, I am a visual learner. I appreciate it when I see kind of like visuals and, you know, nice things to look at. So data capture, point number one here. We have the data capture. Now let's zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so we have the data capturing process. Now, this is the process of collecting the data that you need to build and train your model, obviously, right? Then after that, obviously, that's now like collecting the data, capturing the data, cleaning the data, and obviously moving through that process into the data labeling, which is point number two. Now, data needs to be labeled, okay? We need to understand our data. We need to understand what we're working with, which is a full market, basically a full other market that has unique providers, therefore. Now, this also involves a human in the loop with RL, which is also known as reinforcement learning, okay? Now, if you don't know what reinforcement learning is, I highly, highly recommend you uh, doing your own research, uh, checking out all those things that I'm unpacking here. Don't just listen to me and just, you know, verbatim, just do the things I'm saying. Go do your own research. Like, I always tell people this. Do your own research, okay? So, obviously, visuals on what that looks like for my visual people. So, anyways, so... Point number three here is that we have the data storing and infrastructure parts of the, the things that we're looking at here. So firstly, the first infrastructure decision that an ML team needs to make is where they are going to store their data, okay? Now, this also is typically, you know, you can look at something like Amazon S3, you know, buckets essentially, and uh, you can just hit up the Google machine, figure out what Amazon S3 buckets are if you don't know what that is highly recommend looking into that okay then also you can look at the legend here okay so you can understand a bit of a better overview of what this bad boy looks like and why it is obviously mapped out in this process and what we're looking at here now okay moving over to our fourth point here within this roadmap we have ai programming and model building now programming or selecting a pre-built model is what we're looking at here. So a lot of models are now available via open source, as we all know. So there's less of a need for model development, okay, which is fantastic, all right? Whether you want to develop your own model, that's another, that's a whole nother video for its own, okay? So now these models can be then trained and run, obviously. So we're going to look at that in the next steps with the training and the running thereof. So some cases, these vendors will do the next step for you and make the interface available via an API, like obviously the Mosaic ML, right? So solutions, therefore, which we're looking at the current market here is PyTorch, Hugging Face, and TensorFlow. Now, if you don't know what those are, highly recommend looking into them, okay? Like I said, this is not a video on the theory. Um, you guys are highly experienced entrepreneurs and business owners, so obviously... I know you will go look and do your own due diligence. So now this over here, I put a visual here, just giving you a quick understanding of if you've never heard of what hugging face is, right? So it's an open source data science and machine learning platform. Okay. It's not just a little, little hug, you know what I'm saying? So um, anyway, so look at the legend, as I've said, um, to have a better understanding. So now look, let's look at the point number five here with the Mosaic core market. Okay. Now we have the model training and retraining. So this process, obviously, this is the process of setting your parameters and running your experiments and training runs, right? So many iterations are required whereby a practitioner will train and review the results, okay? Then there's an ongoing process to test for the, obviously, the improvement of the accuracy within the overall test, right? So each iteration requires the practitioner to wait for the batch to run on their GPUs. So speeding up wait times is critical for practitioner productivity. Now, then we have two little branches here. We have running and training iterations and we have the ML ops. Now, within the running and training iterations, we can look at the code that is actually running the training experiment. And then we many times look at the techniques 
to make it faster and more efficient, of it, like the efficiency process thereof, right? And then we look at the Mosaic Composer that does that for you, right? And within the ML Ops, you have experimental platforms for setting up parameters and watching those experiments, looking at dashboards, monitoring the data, etc. The whole, therefore, monitoring process and making decisions based on that data, right? So number six here, we have training infrastructure and GPUs. Now, we have a single node and we have a multiple node, okay? Or, or other multiple nodes. So within the single node of the GPUs, we have thereof, it can stack up to eight GPUs. It's adequate for small models, i.e. linear kind of approach. Then we have the AWS GPUs work in an instance. It's not worth coordinating multiple nodes for small time saving, i.e. an hour or two per run. Then we're looking at the multiple nodes of the GPUs on the other side where we have multiple nodes of up to eight GPUs. We have the orchestration is required to split and training the data across the nodes to be processed and then brought back together. Now, you could use something like Kubernetes to do this manually, or you can simply just run AI. So if you don't know what the Kubernetes is, you can go and look at here. If you obviously just request a doc, I'll make sure we'll send it over to you. Um, obviously me and my team spend a lot of time putting this thing together, putting this whole roadmap thingy for you guys together. And um, it's very effective, okay? If you understand what's happening in this world right now, you understand where everything is moving, you will understand how important this is that you as the business owner, you know, build in this sort of infrastructure that you can actually have the throughput and understanding all of this stuff, right? Having a CAO, and I will talk a little bit later more about that. So then we're gonna look at very large time and it's, it has a very large time and obviously cost savings connected to it, right? And the Mosier Cloud does this. Now, our seventh point here is interfencing. Now, the process of running your model. Now, this is obviously also on May 5th, the Avalara is live. Now, the process of running your model in production and generating outputs. Now, sometimes that can be done on a GPU moving forward, obviously moving forward, right? Now, needing multiple nodes of GPUs for an interface uh, speeds, for interface speeds, we're looking at something like the law of latency for large and or consumer facing models here. Then if we move over to interface within the infrastructure of the GPU. Now, if you don't know what a GPU is, I highly recommend you learning what a GPU is, okay? There's multiple sources of information where you can go learn what that is, and this is a visual thereof. So, very similar within the consideration to training infrastructure, depending on the size of the model and the requirements. And this could be done on a GPU, a single node of GPUs, and multiple nodes of GPUs. Now, number nine, we have to look at the safety guardrails and the constraints which we face, okay? So putting in guardrails to force safety constraints at interface time is obviously very important. Now, let's look at the hardware within the GPU market. The GPU, the hardware of the GPUs are continuing to get faster and faster and with new releases that have obviously lower costs. Now, we're looking at NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, and new entrants like uh, Zerebras, uh, or Zebra, I don't know how you pronounce that word, but anyway, so we're, which are building the processors, right, thereof. Now, you can go and look at what that company is all about and, and how it's intertwined throughout this whole process, okay? And also the Kubernetes I put down here. So, complementary to software approach, okay? Both needs to lower their costs. Now, guys, this has been the video so if you guys enjoyed this video do let me know if you didn't also do let me know and um, if you want this document again go ahead just request it in the comment section down below and i will make sure that i send it through to you personally and if you guys like this video please leave a like on this video leave a comment and uh, do let me know what you think about this video man if if you know if it's too complex if you want me to do you know easier kind of videos explaining things um i will try my best uh, but at the end of the day, take this information, go and apply it into this world, into your business, and do something great for somebody today, guys. 
All right, cool. I'll see you guys in the next video. And we might have our second session on AI and chill with cell systems. Bye-bye for now.